And so the first thing I'm going to do is just show you very quickly, step by step, how to make this constraint set up um, in case you already know why and how you're going to do it. After showing you how to do it, I'll explain the nuances of sort of why. So to begin, I have a couple of primary things that are necessary in this scene. I have the character, they have a hand that articulates, there's an object of some kind they're holding, in this case, a stick or sword. I've also created two locators and I've created those by going to create locator. Um, I've moved both of these and scaled them up so they're just kind of close to what I'm working with so that you can see where they are. So the very first thing you're going to do is take both of your locators um, and match their transformations in space. I'm going to select the locator that's going to follow and then the locator that's going to lead. We're going to do modify match transformations. And I'm just going to have translate and rotate um, selected here. So I still have them selected. I still have them selected in the order that I wanted them, the follower and then the leader. I'm going to press P on my keyboard to parent group these two locators. In my outliner, so I have two locators. They are in a parent relationship with lead with follows hand as the lead locator and lead sword as the following locator in this locator group. With follows hand locator selected, we are then going to click on the hand controller for the character. You could do the wrist. Um, anything that'll be a central rotation point is fine. Um, I've been told that the, the hand is the best because it doesn't matter if you're on your IK or your FK skeleton. And with these selected, you are gonna match transformations once again. Okay, so now my locator group has been moved with the same position in space as the hand itself. Um, and that's, that's important. I'm going to take the, um, the leads sword locator, and I'm going to then move it to the position of the sword. So now we have the leading locator that's in the exact same position as the hand, and we have the following locator in the exact same position of the sword, and that's important. So now it's time to set up our constraints. And unlike a parent group where you do follower and then leader, when you do a constraint system, you do leader and then follower. So I'm gonna select Stella's hand. I'm gonna select my follows hand locator. And then I am going to create a constraint, parent constraint. This is important. Um, so in this case, in this case, it won't matter, but maintain offset is here, and that is going to be important for our next constraint. And now we are going to take the um, leads sword locator, find the sword itself, and we are going to do a constraint, parent constraint. Um, and now you will see that when we make changes to our wrist orientation. This moves with it. And very importantly, if we select the leads sword locator, we can rotate the sword without breaking our constraint. So our orientation changed, constraint still works, rotations still work. Okay, so to talk a little bit about why we're doing this way and how it functions. Let me show you with a very quick demonstration on some different objects. Okay, so as you can see here, I've, I've just created two cubes. I've created two locators. Currently, um, there's no relationship between anything. Um, and a very, the very common thing that people often do is just use the typical constraint system. So for example, we, we grab our leader and we grab our, um, our our follower and we set up a constraint in this case a parent constraint and this does do some cool things for example our translations and our rotation um, can be matched from one to the other um, you move that it moves you do that it moves here's the problem though that is your limitation when you just have this constraint set up 
this following object can't do anything if I rotate it. Let's say I wanted to make a little adjustment here. It just goes back to where it was. And that's, that's a problem. We don't want that. Sometimes we need more complex movement relationships. For example, going back to Stella, you know, when you, when you hold a sword, you don't always hold it exactly the same way in your hand. There's some movement, there's some give, um, when you tip it forward, it's different grip than when you hold it sideways, those things change, right? So we need to be able to change those things. The benefit of a of a group as opposed to a constraint is that the objects within a group can move and change their orientation and but they still follow their leader's example, right? So um, if I set up the relationship between these two objects, selecting the follower and then selecting the leader, and I parent them with the, by pressing P. Now you see that this, this one is the leader. You can see that it, it when you change the orientation, you change the translation, it, it, this follows it, but I can change attributes and movement on this locator without breaking the relationship between the two, right? And that's very important. So you might ask yourself, well, well, wait, why don't we just do this with the sword and Stella? The problem is that a rig, a character rig, already contains a bunch of groups. And by grouping something, you can break the relationship that the objects have to like the root of the rig itself. There's a very specific hierarchy that's very important within there. Um, and so the constraint system is a way to create relationships without breaking that. They each have their problems, but combined together, you can get the benefits of both without the, the penalties really, really of either. And just as I demonstrated before, I demonstrate one more time, follower, um, just to make sure these orientations match, follower than the leader. I'm going to match my transformations. Um, in this particular example, I'll just actually leave them at the exact same spot. I'm going to take my uh, lead locator and just move it in space to my cube. I'm going to take my, my other, my following locator, move it out into space. Um, in this case, I'll just match it the other way. I'm going to match the cube to the position of the locator. Okay. So now we have two cubes. We have locators inside of them that occupy the exact same space. Okay. Our locators are grouped as we described with this locator following this locator. Okay. So right now, if I move this locator, just the locators move. I'm going to take my leading object, which is just case my hand, or in this case, this cube. And I'm going to also, then, then after that, I'm going to select the leading locator. All right. And I'm going to make a constraint, parent constraint. Okay, so what's going to happen here? What did that even do? Well, now this lead locator follows this cube. Oop, I forgot to actually break that previous. Okay, I'll give you another quick thing. Um, I have an unwanted constraint relationship between this cube and this cube from the previous part of the demonstration. Sometimes that's going to happen to you. You're like, oh man, I've got these things constrained. I don't want them constrained. Click the leading object. Click the following objects. They're both selected. Go to constraint. Remove target. So now it has its own information. It is no longer constrained to this object. In this particular case, I'm going to grab this. Grab this guy again, grab this locator. Okay. 
match my transformations. So once again, it occupies the same space as the And we have this parent relationship set up between the, this cube and this locator. So the, the cube is leading, the locator is following. This locator is in a group with this locator as the follower. So when I rotate this, the locator should move, the cube should not. And it works. But now we do want this to move because this is the object this hand is holding, right? So we're going to select the locator that follows this locator. And then we're going to select this cube. And now we're going to set up a parent constraint. Okay, so walk us through it one more time. We have this object, which is, we'll say, our hand. We have this locator that follows it. This locator is the parent of this locator. So when it does something, this locator does the same thing. This cube is now parented to this locator, with the locator leading and the cube being the child. Okay, so now when you go through the whole chain, leader, follower, follower, follower. Right? So when I move this cube, everything should move with it. And it works. And, and, and again, immediately ask yourself, well, why go through all those steps? Why not just parent one? Why not just do the, the constraint to one? Why have these locators in between? It's because it allows you to select this locator, make changes, small, subtle changes, like your weapon inside your grip, and this rotation still works. So you can change the orientation of the object in your hand, but when you turn your wrist or move your arm, it all still follows. You cannot do that with just a constraint, and you cannot group a rig to an object a lot, a lot of the time, depending, depending on what it is. Um, all right. So I hope, I know that's kind of long, but I hope that builds a real understanding of what these relationships are and what they're doing and how they help you. Uh, cool. All right.